All right, so these are Galapagos tortoises. Yeah, nice. Wow. These are black. Yeah, these are great. awesome. I know. They're, they're, why, why do you think they're called Niger? Right? <laughs> Niger, yeah, I mean black, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And you incubated these at different temperatures. To yeah, sure these incubated at a cooler temperature. These should become male. Uh -huh. And these uh, incubated high temperature, they should be female. Wow. See, this is this is dangerous when you come to Thai Park's place because I've always wanted Galapagos tortoises. And We're walking outside to the outdoor enclosures now. I mean, everything's technically outdoors here, but we were just inside like a canopied uh, place. Now we're gonna be going to the outside outside, which is not protected from the elements. So these, these animals will be subjected to all kinds of weather, natural sunlight, rain. We don't get snow here in Florida. So we don't have to worry about that. Look at how beautiful these enclosures are. They've, they've really grown into a naturalistic type of situation since I've been here last because they were just being set up back then. And now they're like, they have plants growing in here and it's, it's really beautiful. There's a Lesser Antilles um, iguana. Sit over there. And these, these, and these reptiles do not care about the heat and they love it. It's hot out here. I'm telling you, it's, it's gotta be close to hundred degrees. And these animals do not care. Yeah, I just want to show you this enclosure. This is a big, 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 big enclosure. A lot of climbing space here and a big water feature. And that croc monitor is not leaving that water because it is hot today, very hot. You can just see him laying there like an alligator. And those things, believe it or not, have the biggest teeth of any reptile, bigger than the Komodo dragon. You do not want to get bit by one of these things. Tom Crutchfield was, unfortunately, when he was breaking up a, a fight between a, a female and a male, and he had to get a, a, over 100 stitches, you know? So these things have a big, big set of teeth. Um, but they, they tame down really well. So, I mean, if you, if you treat them with respect and, you know, you know what you're doing and you're an advanced handler, you can certainly have a pair of these things and, and, and not have a problem, but you have to understand that there, there, there is a danger there with these guys. And uh, my friend Ian just uh, bred these things in captivity. I'm gonna get him on the show, we're gonna talk about it. He's the one I bought the uh, pair of water monitors from the double head T-positive black dragons and he, he just produced these. He's gonna be selling his, his pair of them. Um, of croc monitors because he wants to focus exclusively on you know, water monitors, but they're a lot of work. They really do need an outdoor enclosure. If I had enough, if I, if I had enough space and I wanted to build one of these things, I would definitely have these guys outside because they're, they're super cool. All right, I don't know if you guys can see this. It's very hard for me to look into the camera, but under that log, there's a big lizard and that is a Parenti monitor. His name is Irwin. The first Parenti monitor that I've ever saw in captivity was actually at Peter Birch's house in Australia, which is where they're from. Uh, they're known by their Latin name, Varanus gigantis, because they are huge. And if you, if you Google it, or you go to YouTube, you can find some really cool Parenti monitor videos out there. They're, they're from the desert of Western Australia, South Australia, and the Northern Territory of Queensland. And it is hot today, so they're not gonna be moving very much, I don't suspect. Maybe we can get Ty to actually take us in there and see the Parenti monitor because I'd love to touch this thing and be able to say I touched one. I just saw my first um, Komodo dragon at Bush Gardens. <laughs> you guys saw that video. That was that was exciting, but I definitely I'd love to see this Parenti monitor up close. And here's the famous wall where everyone takes pictures. Oh, look, there's a cat. Look at the cute kitty cat. That's okay. If I know my cats, because I used to be a cat breeder, believe it or not, it almost looks like a blue cream or some sort of bicolor kitty cat. Oh, look at this little baby girl. What a cool little boy. This one, you'd love my little guy, Jedi. I don't know what your name is, but you're a cutie. You got the red, it's almost a calico, but it's like a, it's got more creams in it than calico. It's like a, they call this dilute calico, I believe. Oh yes, but this is the wall right here where everyone takes all the pictures. Ty had this commission. He did a great job painting this thing. 
Now, if you ever thought there was going to be dinosaurs in this place, which there might be, for all I know, this might be the place to, <laughs> to see them. <laughs> Look at this. This is crazy. Oh, I love it. When he was building these, I was so jealous. I was like, oh my. I said, Ty, where's the, where's the top? How these things don't climb out of here? I said, these monitors can't get out of these rocks. They can't climb rocks. I never even thought about that. I don't know what he's got in here, but it's pretty cool. I could definitely see like a small Tyrannosaurus Rex in here. <laughs> I don't even know if he's got these things filled with anything yet. I think that right now, that I don't even think it's finished yet. He's still working on it. So let's take a look over here. All right, now this is a um, Philippine Selfin Dragon, Hydrosaurus postulatus from the Philippines. I don't know if you can see this because I can't see. Oh, there it goes, hold on, this might be better. Let's see if you can see it through here. Ah, uh, there it goes. I don't know if you guys can see it, but they have a nice dorsal sail fin that will pop up when they're not being lazy. Probably when they feel threatened, I would think. You'd see it more. And uh, I see Ty Parks, the man himself, coming towards me right there. She was big for the longest time. Where, what are those eggs, though? These are Lewis eye hybrid Absolutely. eggs. Wow, look at that. How many yeah. do you get? Three? Uh, two and, a, and an infertile. Yeah, that's infertile. Is that a, is that a typical clutch size? Or no, they, this they... is a first time uh, layer. So typically a 10 to 15 is going to be a normal clutch size. Gotcha, gotcha. This is a small female. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh. Ty Park has the biggest collection in the United States of turtles, of water turtles. These setups are so nice. If you guys take a look at these things, they're all cement enclosures with constantly dripping water, live plants. I mean, these turtles are thriving in here. They even, he even has like live bear or fish breeding in, in a lot of these tubs so that people, these fish can feed when they want. And they're gorgeous. This is a uh, your Bigi slider from Argentina and Uruguay. There's one, there's another one over there. Really cool. There's some beautiful yellow bellied slider turtles. Look at the beautiful coloring on those things. I mean, there is some algae there. And Ty's got so many little guppies in here that are breeding, they're, and they're fancy tails. <laughs> I'm surprised the turtles don't eat them all. Let's see if we can zoom in on those little fancy tail guppies. Look at them, they got beautiful red tails. The, the, the fancy, fancy ones are the males. The more dull looking ones are the females. You can see they're trying to breed each other. And this is, he's got thousands of these guppies in here. And they're just thriving in this uh, pond because basically the, there's constantly fresh water dripping into these ponds all day long. And so the turtles do really well. The water quality is great. And fish, when fish thrive in something and they live, and breed, you know the water quality is good. And Ty has figured out how to, you know, create turtle pens where the water is constantly being regenerated and the turtles just, they love it. You can see how beautiful they are. You can see the fish that are with them. All right, those are, that's a Belize slider from uh, South America, Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, these turtles are from, beautiful turtles. Look at the look at the shells. They have red in them. They're they're really. I never even seen. I've never seen these before. Uh, like I said, Ty's got the the most elaborate grouping of turtles anywhere in the world. Most diverse. And look, you don't even need a morph. Look at that. Look at that red in the, in the shells. It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. It's it's um, really. It's a pleasure to look at all these turtles, you know. If I can't have all these, at least I can come here to Ties, which is only 20 minutes from my house, and I can enjoy them. All right, so these are Galapagos tortoises. Yeah, nice. Wow. These are black. Yeah, these are awesome. I know, the, why, why do you think they're called Niger, right? <laughs> Niger, yeah, I mean black, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And you incubated these at different temperatures. To yeah, sure these incubated at females. a cooler temperature. These should become male, uh -huh. and these 
uh, incubated high temper, they should be female. Wow. See, this is this is dangerous when you come to Thai Park's place because I've always wanted Galapagos tortoises and and I'm gonna have to Danger. buy. A, I'm gonna have to buy a pair of, uh, of these now. Oops, I'm gonna have to buy a pair of these guys. <laughs> Um, and these things get huge. You're going to show us the parents, right, after? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I want to see the they're, parents. You know, 30, uh, right now, they're going away 3500 Okay. But, you know. But I'm going to get this special day Palumbo price, but I'm not going to tell anyone what that is, so sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and Ty keeps them outside. Look, these are outdoor enclosures in the summer here, so they can actually get the sunlight, because yeah. the sunlight definitely they helps these hide. guys. Yeah, they hide right under here. Do you find and that they, they grow faster and they grow better outside, even well, the babies? Definitely, and they belong outside. Of course, they need protection, so they have screens. I've out. had my sulcatas inside for six years since I have. I'm just about. I was just telling you were showing me where, how to build an outdoor enclosure, and, yeah. and I said I, I know they're going to do better outside. And yeah, when they're babies like this, I like to have them like this kind of enclosure, mm -hmm. right? Right. This is great. Yeah, I, I might set something up like this. You know, just you notice that we put sand up here so they can't. It's pretty packed, so they so can't they dig. Come out. Yeah, coral, okay. coral, uh, dig out. And we give them always a shade. Is it is it worth putting a screen on the bottom too, so that they can't get out at all? Yeah, and they they yeah that that would be something that you would do. But you remember, we got another fence, surrounding fence around there. They escape. They can't get. Ah, out. yeah. So the perimeter, he has a perimeter fence too. Yeah, right, so they can't exactly. get out. That's so smart. We don't have to really worry about them escaping. They got out of this. Right. They'd be still be in this. Right, place. right, right. Awesome. I love it. All right, <laughs> I'm sold. I'm I'm getting a pair. I try not to give them. Uh, produce as much as possible. Now and why? I also give them alfalfa cube wet. So best thing to give them is uh, Timothy hay. Timothy hay. So alfalfa it's... hay. All right, they do really well with them. What about the sulcata? Same thing? Yeah, absolutely. Don't give them. I give them romaine lettuce. Is that not good? Yeah, probably not a good idea. All right, I didn't know that. You see? And it's it's you know, and when they get big, it's gonna eat you hard. Oh hot yeah, yeah. They yeah they they eat like three of those heads yeah. of romaine lettuce. Now this is a uh, Galapagos tortoise. This is only six years old. This thing is huge. I don't know if you guys yeah. can see it in there, but it's it's very big. Beautiful. And I can't wait to get this pair from Ty because I'm gonna. I'm gonna grow them up. I'm gonna build a little outdoor enclosure. Now Ty's got me all motivated with the tortoise uh, motivation, and that doesn't hurt. So we're gonna leave this guy alone. It's very hot here. He's just chilling out and uh, cooling off, and I'm super excited. All right. I didn't know he had more than one Parenti monitor. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's really hard. It's very bright out here. So I don't know if it's filming, but he's under that little hide right there. And that is a Parenti monitor. I think you guys should be able to see it, even if I can't see it. And they are exquisite looking. They look like they're a morph almost. They got this beautiful white. They look kind of like an azanthic almost, because they're like black and white. Beautiful, majestic monitors. He's got such good stuff here. I could stay here all day at Ty's place, even though it's 100 degrees. I'll probably have sunburn if I leave here. The Parenti is actually known as Varanus giganteus. It's the largest monitor lizard native to Australia. It's the fourth largest living lizard on Earth. They're relatively lean lizards by nature, and their first line of defense is usually to run away. They're diggers, they can excavate a burrow for shelter in minutes. And they're very fast animals, capable of running at 25 miles per hour. On all four legs, or only on their hind legs, so they can go on two legs that fast. It's crazy. And they can get up to eight feet long, which is a very big lizard. All right, we're inside the Aldabra tortoise enclosure, which is big, but not huge. And we're gonna go looking for this guy. I suspect he's probably in the hut because it's so hot here. These guys have to stay out of the sun. As you can see, there's pretty big poops on the floor. These are just some big, big tortoises. And they're, they can live up to 200 years, these guys, believe it or not. Ah, oh, there he is. Let's see if we can get close enough to this guy. There he is. Aldabra tortoise. That thing is enormous. Staying out of the sun, staying nice and cool in the shade here. This thing is in I didn't, you know, I didn't realize I figured you had to feed these things tons and tons of vegetables, but Ty says grass and hay. That's it. That's all they need. You feed them too much like romaine lettuce and stuff like that, and it's not even good for them. I'm gonna stop feeding. My tortoise is so much romaine lettuce. I didn't know that, but look at this thing is, you have no concept of how big this thing is. I, there's no way I can lift this thing up. I'm pretty strong. It is tremendous. And 
it's such an impressive animal. And the fact that we have them out here in South Florida and they're living really happy lives is, is amazing. Um, I can only hope I can get my Galapagos this big in my lifetime. <laughs> now they're outside. Super fun. All right, now we're going into the Sulcata tortoise habitat. Let's see what these guys are doing here. This, these are tortoises after my own heart. We have the albino ones. I don't think these are albinos, but let's take a look and see what's in here. Ah, that's an enormous. Look at how big that guy is. Whoa, that is a big sulcata tortoise. Once again, out of the uh, sunlight here, staying nice and cool in the shade here. And he's like, I'm not coming out for anything. At night, I'll come out and I'll do some eating, but it's way too hot. It's about 100 degrees now. So these guys are just gorgeous. Top three biggest tortoises in the world. And ours are getting big, so... It's good to see that Ty builds these little huts here for them so they can come in here. In the winter, they have heat in there. In the summer, they use this shade to get out of the summer heat. And the enclosure is big, but it's not huge. They got enough room to move around. This is the uh, old part of Iguana Land, where I think they have a lot of the breeding cages. See the iguana right there? They're active in this heat. They don't care about the heat. But this is yeah, this is the older part of Iguana Land where really most people are not access to. I have a old season <laughs> VIP pass from Ty. I can go where I want here, but uh, just showing you the old older part of the facility where they're doing the breeding. See, there might be a iguana right there laying some eggs in that little nesting area there. That's what they do. So. This was the, what Iguana Land was before he opened it up to the public, you know? There's just a lot of breeding cages here. And they're still here, he's still using them. There's another sulcata tortoise. This is in the breeding area, so I would assume that's probably a female. Maybe gonna lay some eggs, or maybe she laid some eggs already. And she's looking really, really nice over there. So, we're not gonna bother her too much. She looks very protective. She might be in the process of in the next couple days or maybe next weeks laying a clutch of eggs. And it's great here. It's like such a wild reptile west here, as they say. All right, there's a uh, spiny tailed iguana, also known as a Campeche spiny tailed iguana. And they're from southeastern Mexico, these guys. Let's see if we can zoom in on this guy a little bit. Look at that tail. Look at the reds in that, in that lizard. That is a nice looking iguana. And you can see why I call it, they're called spiny tails. And what a nice enclosure he's got set up here for it. These things are just really, really nicely done. He's got a whole bank of these things, as far as the eye can see. And each one just as nicely decorated and just spends a lot of time really perfecting these cages so that these animals are living in an environment that's very natural to, to each other. Oh, there's some blue-tongued skinks in there. Hmm. I don't see them. They're probably burrowed in the sand. If you can see, look down into that water bowl. You can see a Southeastern Asian water monitor. Varanus salvator macro maculatus. And I don't think we're gonna be able to see him that well, but this is the Southeast Asian water monitor, most common widespread subspecies of Asian monitor, a Varanus salvatori. And this is what we have, except we have albinos. Some head, we have some genetically morphed out monitors. Ah, a little serenity here at Ty's. He's got a beautiful koi pond. He spent a lot of money building this thing. He's got African cichlids in there. He's also got some amazing, amazing looking koi you'll see swimming by. And gorgeous. Just, it's very peaceful over here. You can just kind of like sit down here. If it wasn't so hot, I could fall asleep right here just watching these beautiful fish. And I do miss my koi pond. I know when I first came here, when they were building this place, the koi pond went dry, like they had a leak. And they lost a whole bunch of really expensive koi. So thank God Ty, Ty was able to 
Ty was able to put this all back together here. But the fish that he told me are doing really, really well. You can see how big they are. They're, they're, they'll probably be breeding, I'm sure, at this point. A lot of little fish in there, too. I don't know if they're baby Africans or if they're baby kois. Probably more than likely the African cichlids. You can, I don't know how close you guys can look down and see those little babies, but there's so much wildlife here at Iguana Land. Look at a little waterfall they got there, and it kind of runs all the way down here. He's got the lily pads that are blooming, they're beautiful little flowers, purple and yellow flowers. Look at those blues. Those blue, um, African cichlids, they are gorgeous, look at that. Wow, that is just, this is exquisite. He did an amazing job with this koi pond. I, you gotta take your hat off to, this is, it's breathtaking. And I'm sure he built this for himself, as I would as well. Ah, <laughs> uh, look at this guy. How blue is he, how gorgeous. This is a hybrid between a Cyclora luisi and Cyclora nubila. Uh, they're from the Grand Cayman Islands, and Ty, this is probably Ty's coup de grace. This is his, what he's known for, is making these incredible iguanas, and you can see he's got a little leaf hanging off his mouth there he was eating, I guess. And he's, they're very social, these animals, and he's kind of looking, he came right to the edge of the enclosure. Most of these animals don't want anything to do with you, and these guys are really tame, and I bet if we took this guy out, he'd be super, a little puppy dog. He's showing his tongue. He's like, come on, pet me, pet me, pet me, pet me. Great job, Ty. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas, except we're not at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. We're at Ty Park's Iguana Land. And I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. This might be a two-parter because there was a lot of uh, stuff we covered. And I hardly even touched on most of the stuff that's here. I'm gonna come back here in another week or two. I'm gonna pick up my Galapagos tortoises I'm buying from Ty. Yep, talk me into it. Well, you really didn't have to talk me into it. I, I wanted them. And I'm gonna get a pair of those things. And I can't wait to pick those up from him and set those up. I'm, I'm just thinking about how I wanna set them up. But when you come here, you'll see something you don't see in other places. Just like at Crutchfields animals living in their naturalistic environment. They're able to have access to running water, plants, to dirt, to dig, room to climb around. It's, 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 it's like being at the, at the greatest zoo of all time if you're into reptiles. If you're in the Punta Gorda area, if you're in my area, Cape Coral, Fort Myers, I implore you to come over to Iguana Land. You will not be disappointed. If you love snakes and you love reptiles and tortoises and turtles, you'll be in heaven. You'll never want to leave here. Don't bring your kids though, <laughs> because they're going to get high. They're not going to want to stay as long as you are. You're going to want to stay hours and hours and hours. And uh, it's bring a lunch. There's picnic tables here set up. You can sit and eat and uh, stay here all day and enjoy yourself. All right, guys, I hope you're uh, having a great week. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back, guys, tomorrow morning.